a slightly rearranged schedule in the whirlwind engineering updates firstly many thanks to all youtubers who have subscribed to the channel and posted comments if you have any questions please visit the forum on the whirlwind fighter project webpage and we will try to answer them the whirlwind was the first british fighter to have a bubble canopy possibly the first in the world the very size of the canopy has presented the whirlwind fighter project with many problems and challenges to solve From the experience gained of manufacturing the windscreen quarter panels, it became apparent the Whirlwind Fighter project did not have the equipment or expertise to produce the main canopy. After contacting several companies that produced large mouldings, all of which stated the Whirlwind canopy was too large for their equipment and processes, the Whirlwind Fighter project was quite fortunate to find a company that was willing to give it a go. White Ellerton Plastics, a small company specialising in low production, high-end mouldings, situated in St Albans, with a lot of experience of aircraft canopy production, liaised with the Whirlwind Fighter project over several weeks regarding the manufacture of the templates required to produce the canopy. It was beyond the Whirlwind Fighter Project's capacity and finances to produce a full-scale cavity mould. It was therefore decided that the canopy would be draped over templates, base clamped and then inflated to the required form. It was fully understood that this process was not as accurate as cavity moulding. The Whirlwind Fighter project accepted this with the knowledge that the coupe base plate could be manufactured to the canopy. The base plate being independent of the airframe structure allowed for the accommodation of any inaccuracies in the canopy without compromising the airframe structure. For longevity and strength, we would have preferred the canopy to be manufactured from polycarbonate. However, the processes required to mould the very thick canopy in polycarbonate were at the very limit of White Ellerton's ovens and beyond the Whirlwind Fighter Project budget. The decision was taken to mould to the original specification perspex. The whole sliding coupe canopy assembly is a complex arrangement requiring four roller tracks, the forward two being mounted to the fuselage, the aft tracks forming part of the coupe base plate. The forward extension of the base plate carrying the rollers for the front tracks where the rear upper longer ones hold the brackets for the rear rollers. This arrangement allows for the alignment of the forward and offset rear tracks to remain parallel to the longitudinal axis while inclined to the horizontal axis or while mounted on a tapering elliptical form fuselage. The rear base plate provides a structural foundation for two angle support struts. These in turn support an upper canopy support frame. This frame is in itself a complex component being of a tapered compound curved channel with rolled edge side stiffness. The rear of the upper frame then connects to the canopy's aluminium tail fairing. The manufacture of the coupe base plate was a very complex sheet metal process. The tapering compound curve components along with the curved variable angle side skirts 
required to match the canopy profile required a number of 3D profile formers to be made. This process in itself is very time consuming. All the component parts have to be modelled twice, firstly in full 3D, then into 2D or flat patterns. The 3D for the formers and the 2D for the profile required to CNC machine the flat form aluminium components. 3D and 2D models are transferred into the computer aided manufacture software to produce the actual cutter tool paths. For the components, <coughs> CAM software converts the tool path data into CNC G codes. G codes are the numeric data required to move the CNC machine along the required tool paths. The G codes are then passed to the CNC machine operating control software. The manufacturing processes of the coop canopy assembly is in reality a microcosm of the aircraft in general and represents the many engineering processes and specialist disciplines required. The Whirlwind Fighter project is fortunate to have modern engineering manufacturing technologies available that make the project viable CAD, CAM, CNC etc. However, Technology cannot replace all of the traditional hand skills and conventional machining processes required. Economies of scale is the greatest challenge to the project. The cost-benefit analysis of whichever process is required for manufacture is carefully considered against the available finances. As can be seen, the majority of processes are conducted in-house. This provides great financial savings, but does unfortunately carry some production time penalties. Another quirk of the Whirlwind Coupe was the operating mechanism. The Spitfire Hurricane had a sliding coupe, while the BF-109 had a side hinge one. Due to the size and weight of the whirlwind coupe, it was opened and closed by a rotary handle on the port side of the cockpit. A pinion on the handle shaft engaged with a rack connected to the forward end of the base plate, requiring many turns to open and close the canopy. A knockout panel was provided in the canopy for emergencies but only any use when the aircraft was on the ground for access by the ground crew, if the pilot was incapable of using the winding gear. While pilots love the visibility provided by the bubble canopy, they disliked the operating system, as it had no jettison capability for the pilot in an emergency exit, resulting from either combat or I our aircraft malfunction. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of dedicated volunteers. If you feel you could assist in recreating this iconic World War II fighter please visit our Facebook and web pages. Any donations can be made through our GoFundMe page. Also, please visit our active partner in the Whirlwind Fighter Project and future home of the Whirlwind, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum. Many thanks.